Okay, now after you have finished sketching out the diagram, you can use Microsoft Visio to create uh, a, proper, a proper drawing of the, uh, the, the, the crow's foot diagram. There are other tools out there, but I've never used them. Uh, there is Smart Draw. I don't know if Smart Draw has a similar feature. I'm sure it probably does. And I'm sure there are others out there that will allow you to do it. Uh, but since we have Visio here, uh, this is readily available. That's what we'll be using. Now, when you go into Visio, if you use it regularly, you can, it will be at the top here in recently <coughs> used templates and it's a database model diagram. If it's not, you always, you can always go into software and database and it will be in there, database model diagram. You select it, select the units, US or metric, and then you click on create. And like all other uh, office, you have the ribbon, etc. But in Visio, which we covered before, we have the entity, and tonight we're actually going to use the relationship. We're not going to use the dynamic connector. So we create the entity, as I did mention before, in the same manner. You take the entity, you drag it out, double click on it, it comes up at the bottom, you type in the name. We were doing employees. And you can put the columns in. I'll just put some of them in. I wouldn't exhaust, I wouldn't exhaust it. Uh, Again, primary key, you just click on PK to select the primary key. Other items that are required, you can select and they will make them uh, bold. Send them first name. Last name. Where I come from, it's not necessary that you have a first name. Huh? Okay. So, uh, in some, some societies as well. Uh, the other entity we're creating is the... Job. Sorry? Job. Positions. Yep. Uh, I can select this and I can drag it up to move it. Again, we select the primary key. Uh, make that one day required as well. And to get rid of this, I do that. Now we have to put the relationships in. I'll show you how to put in the one-to-many relationship, both sides, the one-to-one -one relationships, relationship, and then we will actually create the third table, which is the new table, and I'll show you how to put the many-to-many -many relationship in. But remember the many-to-many -many relationship, you need a new table, a joint table for that. So we use this here, the relationship, drag it out there and you notice it does not look like a crow's foot. We have to modify the view and how it appears in access. To do that, database, display options, crow's feet. Uh, if you want things like the referential action to, to turn up, to show up, you can select that. Uh, we haven't really talked about referential actions as yet. When we come to the database part of it, uh, to implementing the database, we will deal with that. But if you want that to show up, you select that. But relationship, cross feed, that's enough. Click on OK. And you notice now it looks more like the cross feed. In order to get things up, to get things the way they're supposed to be, select it, move it, the end, Move it over the entire entity, not the end of it. Release, and move the other end over here to the other end, and release. Notice the foreign key goes in automatically. So remove it, I can click on it, and remove the end, and it removes it. Remove the end, it removes it, I can turn it around, put it over on that end, put it over on that end, and the foreign key falls into place. All of this here 
is done by Visio for you automatically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, when you have finished doing the detailed diagram, um, all you really have from there to the step six is the sketch of the new one. This here allows you to create an actual, uh, a proper diagram. But when you're sketching it and you're doing, uh, as, as I pointed out in the book, right? When you, when you come to this here, to doing it in Visio, it puts in the foreign keys for you. So you don't really have to worry about that. As long as you put the crow's foot on the correct end and you use the correct stencil and you use the correct object, it will be done for you automatically. Okay? Now, if we want to, for example, to change this relationship to a one-to-one -one relationship, I double-click on it. Now, there are many different things about the relationship that we can change. The definition says what is related to what. The name of the relationship, we're not going to put a name in for the relationship. Miscellaneous, very important. It says whether the relationship is an identifying or a non-identifying relationship. If it is an identifying relationship, the primary key, the foreign key goes up and forms a composite key. And the line changes from dashed to solid. How do we know when it's identifying? Uh, the only time it's really an identifying is in a many-to-many -many relationship. Yeah. Now, cardinality, zero or more, one or more, zero or one, exactly one, or range. The ones that you will be interested in is either zero or more or one or more. That depends on the optionality, which I explained earlier. Can, zero, must, one or more. Now, if it's a one-to-one -one relationship, we have to change this here to exactly one. Set this as non-identifying, and you will now have no crow's foot. The referential action says, uh, talks about cascades and deletes. Again, when we come to implementing the relationships in the database in Access, I will explain uh, what cascade means, what delete means, and so on. So that is how you obtain a one-to-one -one relationship, miscellaneous, exactly one. And one-to-many is either zero or more, or one or more in terms of the cardinality. Now, in order to create the many-to-many -many relationship, we need what is referred to as a join table. I just put an empty table out there. Let's give it the name that uh, we had talked about, which was employee positions or employees position. And now for the relationship, we drag one relationship out. Uh, we indicate it just as we had when we were sketching it out. And the difference between these two is uh, if you decide to go on uh, creating them, uh, creating a composite primary key, you select both as identifying. If you decide that you're going to have a different primary key for all of them, you select it as non-identifying, and then in the table of itself, you can put in your own column. And you make that the primary key. That when you create this join table here, there may be fields that are unique to this table and this table only. It's mentioned in the book, but I forgot to mention it. For example, this here is saying that an employee can fill many positions and a position can be filled by many employees. But you may need certain things like the details. When did the employee start at that position? When did they end at that position? And maybe other comments also. 
So in order to do that, if there are other columns in that table, I can put things like start date, end date. And whatever else I want. So we have a whole new join table here. And again, uh, it, it's one of two ways you can do it, uh, like I mentioned. So that's it. One to one, one to many, many to many. 